Today I'm going to show you guys how to master the clone stamp tool in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. We got a cool episode for you today. It's all about the clone stamp tool. And you might be saying there's a whole episode on the clone stamp tool. That's crazy. Well, the clone stamp tool is really important. It's a huge part of Photoshop. It's going to make a huge difference when you use Photoshop if you know how to use the clone stamp tool very well. So we're dedicating this entire episode to showing you guys everything you need to know about using the clone, ta clone stamp tool. We're going to show you guys how to use the clone stamp dialog box, different ways of sampling your images, as well as using custom brushes with the clone stamp tool. So the image we're working on today is by Asa and Kat of Deep End Imagery. They work with us here at Flurn, and we're going to link to them right down below because they're amazing photographers and videographers. So this is a really cool image. Let's just go ahead and talk about some of the things that we're going to be doing to this image with the clone stamp tool. So let's just grab a nice color to kind of like highlight some things. Now the clone stamp tool is really great for getting rid of things that are basically distracting in your image. Things like this lavalier mic that's just a little bit distract distracting and I, we can totally get rid of that and it's really not that hard to do. All right, her hand I think is a little bit distracting as well. Like I would rather this just kind of like end with white. I don't need her hand to be there. Um, we have a little area of her dress where you can see kind of some padding and things like that. So this area, we're going to be able to fix that as well. And then a couple other little areas with the photo as well. Just things like all these little, like a couple of white spots in her hair and things like that, where you can kind of just see through it. And then in our groom's head, looks like he's got an area here. Normally I would not fix this actually if I was editing this photo and this, these were my clients or something like that. But I'm gonna show you guys how to do it just because this is a tutorial. All right, so we're gonna take care of those areas first. So the first thing I wanna show you, let's go ahead, we're gonna click on our background layer and we're gonna hit S for the clone stamp tool. Now here, it's gonna give you quite a few options up here on the top. Your mode, generally I wanna keep this mode at normal pretty much all the time. All right, our opacity and flow, those work the exact same way that a regular brush tool does. We wanna keep all these aligned, we want that checked. And here where we see the uh, sample, there's a couple options. We have the current layer, current and below, and all layers. So if I click on current layer, and let's just say I create a new layer, which I do plan on, and I try to hold Alt or Option to sample a point and then start painting, it's not gonna do anything because there's nothing on this current layer. Now that doesn't mean you should go to your background layer and start you know, sampling there and painting around like this. Um, I don't recommend that. I don't recommend ever working on your background layer. It's a much better idea to, take a, to make a new layer. Now with this new layer, just make sure you change your sampling to current and below or all layers. Now all layers is gonna sample everything, even the layers that are above this layer. So I usually have this set to current and below. So that way here on a new layer, if I wanted to sample her smile and paint it over here for some odd reason, I can do that. So we're using a new layer and we can sample current and below. Now let's go ahead, before we actually do the clone stamping, I wanna show you guys some of the interesting things in the clone stamp dialog. Now to get to the clone stamp dialog, you can click on this button right up here and this will bring your clone source up right here, or you can just go to window and then down to clone source. So clone source, and here we have it. Now your Photoshop may default by having this show overlay automatically checked, which means that if I sample a point, let's say I sample right over here on her eye, and I move my cursor around and I'm not holding down anything with this hand, I'm going to see a little preview of actually what we're going to be clone stamping. Now, I prefer to not have this visible. To me, this kind of gets in the way. Some people like to have this visible. You can have things like have it clipped or unclipped. Basically, it's, I don't know why anyone would not click clipped because I can't see anything of what I'm doing. So let's hit clipped again, and then you can see what you're doing again. You can change your opacity here if it's, you know, if you would like to be a little bit lower. You can even change your blend mode to see like, what would this look like if it only darkens things? Um, again, not as helpful, but they do have those options. So I generally leave my show overlay unchecked. Now, this means that I don't, I'm kind of flying blind here a little bit. So if I uncheck this and I sample her eye or something like that, I don't see what it's going to look like, but there's actually a quick way you can use a keyboard shortcut to get this show overlay back. Now it's not gonna check it, it's just gonna give you a, pre a quick preview. So I leave this unchecked and then I hold Alt or Option as well as Shift. 
And that gives me the exact same thing. But when I let go of those keyboard shortcuts, my clone stamp source, the show overlay, disappears. So it's a quick keyboard shortcut that you can use to have that show when you want it and not show when you don't. OK, so that's pretty cool. Now, the other thing we do have things like you can stretch your width and your height with. I, I find not really that helpful at all. This is like if you want to you know, clone stamp her eye, and then when you paint it back in, you want it to be much bigger of an eye. Um, to me, that's not really helpful. To me, I would rather just do this on a new layer and then transform the layer afterwards. So we're just going to reset that. You can change the angle and things like that. Again, to me, that's not that useful. Now, the other thing they do allow you to do is create multiple clone sources. So let's say our first clone source is the eye. So I sample there, and I'll paint an eye over there. Sure, why not? We can click over here, and I can choose this to be her mouth. So I can sample that, and now we're painting a mouth over there. I'm sorry, this is kind of weird what I'm doing, but you get the idea. Now, if I choose the first one again, it's going to basically sample from the same point. So I'm going to continue being able to sample from the same point. If I choose this one, I'm going to continue being able to sample from the same point there as well. And we're making a face. Let's just delete that layer because that looks gross. But you get the idea. You can continue to create new sample points and then go back to them. So if I create this point and I sample from over there, I'm now painting on there. And I can continue to switch back and forth. Personally, I don't use these much, but they are there for your option. I generally just click on the one. There we go. I generally just click on one and then change my sample point. Like if I want to sample a new point, I'll just hold Alt or Option, sample a new point, and then paint. Sample a new point, and then paint. OK. So those are some really cool options here in the clone source. The, the, I think the most useful is I keep this show overlay unchecked, but if I need it back, Shift and Command, or sorry, Shift and Alt or Option will get that back. So now it's time to show you guys how to actually use the clone stamp tool. We're going to start off, I'm going to take care of this area of hair right up here. I'm going to show you a couple of cool things that you can do with the clone stamp tool. So we're just going to sample here. So Alt or Option to sample right over here. And then I'm just going to paint in right over here. All right. Now let's use that little preview option. So sample over here, holding Alt, click there. And then I'm going to hold, still holding Alt, I'm going to hold down the Shift key. And there I'm going to get a little preview of what I'm actually going to be painting in. And that's just going to really help out being able to actually see what you're doing. So you can, there we go you can get something that matches pretty well. All right, let's fill that in a little bit darker. And there we go. So just a really quick way to clean that up. Now, again, I probably would leave this normal, or <laughs> I would leave it as is if these were my clients, because that's a part of him. And generally, it's not a good idea to go around changing that. But that's a good way to show you guys you can actually take care of that using the sample. So now we're going to take care of the lapel mic. It's a little bit different, but basically, the principles are the same. So let's go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to hit S for the clone stamp tool. And then we're going to sample right over here. There we go. And then I'm going to start painting right down here. We're going to take care of this in two separate parts. So we can hold down, again, Shift as well as Alt. And we'll get a little preview. And I'm just going to start painting in this area. And I know it's not matching exactly, but we can always transform it, which we'll do in just a second. So we're going to paint a little bit more area than we think we need. And you can always use things like the layer mask to just take care of that, like I can layer mask in the area away. OK, next we're going to hit Command T, and we're going to go ahead and rotate this around a little bit. And then I'm going to right click and go to Warp. And warping is just going to allow me to actually like move these pixels around, which is really cool. So I can click and just kind of drag there, hit that checkbox, and we're good to go. So you can see I was able to re re completely replace this part of the of the lapel. Now, the other things that we have to kind of keep in mind for some of the times you're going to have areas like this where it's like a little bit darker up here and a little bit lighter down here than it needs to do to blend in. There's a really cool trick for this. We're going to use the brush tool. We're going to change the blending mode of the brush itself. And I'm going to, I'm going to use something called transparency lock. So with your layer selected, what we're going to do is go ahead and lock our transparency. And that's right over here. Now, what a transparency lock does, this is really kind of cool. A transparency lock, if I normally just paint on this layer with red or something like that, it's going to look like this, OK? If I hit this transparency lock, it's only going to allow me to paint where this layer has already got pixels on it. And in this case, it's just where I use the clone stamp tool. So it's going to lock it to just this layer. Very, very helpful. So we're going to keep the transparency lock on. I'm going to change, use my brush. We're going to just use a soft edge brush here. And now we're going to change our brush mode from normal down to soft light. And we're going to paint with black and white. This is essentially the same thing as dodging and burning. 
So if I paint white on this layer with a soft light layer, it's going to basically just lighten it up a little bit. So I can paint light right over here. There we go, to lighten it up so it matches what we've got there. And I'm gonna hit X to paint with black right down here. And there we go, it's going to match that in. So I'm painting with soft light areas just right on this layer and that's just allowing it to blend in with what's already existing in the background. And you can do this using this transparency lock, which is really nice. Okay, let's go ahead and show you guys that again because it's a little bit more advanced. So again, create a new layer. We're gonna hit S for the clone stamp tool. I'm gonna sample this area and then we're gonna paint it in right down here. All right, let's go ahead and zoom in. Hit Command T, right click, and I'm gonna go to warp. And we're just gonna warp that up so it aligns perfectly with the rest of the jacket. All right, we're gonna erase this away. And now you can see it's a little bit lighter than it needs to be. So you could either use curves or we'll just use the same technique. So I'm gonna hit this transparency lock, grab our brush tool, paint with black because we need it to be darker and change the mode of our brush to soft light. So as I paint on there with the soft light, you can see it's just gonna darken it up. And there we go. Just stop when it looks good. If I continue going, it'll continue to get darker and darker and darker. Really, really cool technique. All right, so there we can see basically we completely replaced the lapel and it looks totally real. You wouldn't even know that it happened. Okay, so that's another use. Now let's go ahead and look at the next thing we're going to do with their clone stamp tool. This is a little bit more of a simple application. We're just gonna get rid of her hand. It's a nice hand, um, but it just kind of takes away from the image just a little bit. So again, on a new layer, we're gonna sample current and below. I'm gonna sample right up here by holding Alt or Option and just paint right down below here. There we go. Very nice. So you can see it just kind of duplicates exactly what was right above it. And especially in an area like a nice area that's basically just light like that, it does it really, really well. Okay, so that's a really simple use of the clone stamp tool. Now we're gonna go in here and we're gonna take care of this area. So we're gonna take, uh, grab a new layer again. And you can see I'm using new layers over and over and over again. It just gives me the maximum amount of flexibility. If I want to at the end, I can merge all those layers together. That's gonna decrease the file size, things like that. For now, I'm okay with having a bunch of layers. So this time we're gonna hit the clone stamp tool. So S for the clone stamp tool. I'm gonna sample right over here because I want this kind of area, it's going from highlight into shadow kind of coming around and I want this to kind of like follow along all the way here. This is kind of like, you can see the, the shadow area over here. So Alt or Option to sample over here. And then I'm gonna go right over here, hold down the Shift key just to make sure I'm doing it right in about the right place. And there we go. And painting in there. All right, looking great. Now, if you're painting too much, like if it's going too, if it's putting down a little bit too much um, when you're clone stamping, you can change your opacity or your flow as well. So you can actually put down a little bit less of the, a, like a little bit less of the color or the texture when, if you need to, by lowering the opacity or the flow. Okay, so that looks pretty good. We can see it's starting to blend in pretty well. Let's go ahead and just sample this to blend that in just a little bit better with the rest of the dress. Okay. And now what we're gonna do, because it is blended in, but we can still see there's a lot of area that we need to kind of take care of there. We're gonna put a layer mask on this, and I'm gonna use a layer mask with a small brush. Just make sure you change your brush mode back to normal. If you have used something like soft light with your brush mode, it's always gonna trip you up. Just make sure you change it back to normal. Okay, there we go. And we can just kind of paint back the, the nice like little feathered areas, and things like that. All right. There we go. So we've taken care of this area as well. Basically just making a little bit more, we're just getting rid of that area from the dress. Now, if you need to, we're gonna create another layer. I'm gonna grab my clone stamp tool and we're gonna bring our flow down because I'm gonna add a little bit of shadow there. So we're gonna sample over there and I'm just gonna paint in a little bit of a shadow. There we go, just to help it be a little bit more realistic. All right, cool, that looks good. So another use with the clone stamp tool, and you can see that just clears that area up quite a bit as well. So let's just look at the before and the after with those. There we go, really nice. All right, now we're gonna zoom in here, and I'm gonna show you guys right over here with the hair. This is, a, again, a really simple area. Just hold Alt or Option to sample this and paint it in. 
Now, if you ever need to right click, you can actually choose to use different brushes. You can change your size, you can change your hardness, you can change how wide your brush is. So for instance, if I wanted to clone stamp an area that was just, you know, like more of an oval, you can do this as well. So you're not limited to your certain, like here, I can rotate this around there, clone stamp here, and basically just duplicate the hair shape. So you're not limited to just a soft round or a hard round brush. You can actually choose any brush. You can even use a custom brush. Like if I wanted to clone stamp, you know, something like this crazy looking brush right there. There we go. I could clone stamp this and then paint it in like this as well. So any brush you want to use, you can use with the clone stamp tool. All right, looking good. So we took care of a lot in a relatively short period of time. Let's go ahead and hold down shift, click on all those layers and hit command G and we're going to show you the before and the after. So this is the before and this is the after. Just a couple quick little changes on this image, but they, getting rid of those distractions really make a big difference in the final image. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. It's cool you're able to hang out with me and learn things about the clone stamp tool. Give us a big like on this video if you did like this video. It's a thumbs up on YouTube. It really helps us out. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can receive updates. Share this with your friends and leave us a comment down below if there's something you guys would like to learn on Photoshop. Thanks again for watching and I'll flirt you later. <laughs> it's just not true. <laughs> Flutter.com, seven days a week. Our website is open seven days a week. <laughs> Be sure to check out our pro tutorials. We keep our store open seven days a week because it's online. Peace. All right, there's enough bloopers for this one.